Oh, God bless you. I'm Pastor Frank Ray. I'm so honored and delighted to be able to come and share with you and spend just a few moments with you, knowing that I would bring the message, of course, in the beautiful sanctuary of Salem. We're now in another place and confined in the studio here at our church. And I want to just take a moment and spend a few moments with you or our audience. I came from a very wonderful family. I 18 boys and girls. I had a wonderful father that was a very fine mentor for me, a beautiful mother. My mother loved the Lord. She stayed in church. She carried me to church. And I'm thankful to God for how she impacted my life and making sure that I saw and got the things I needed uh, from the Lord. Not like many pastors and preachers, I did not grow up in a home with a father, a grandfather, an uncle uh, that was preaching, uh, that was familiar with sharing the gospel across the nation. I did not have that privilege. Um, I don't complain about it because God do what he do. He know what to do, when to do it, and how to do it. But God is so willing and blessed me to have preachers in my family now. My son, Frank Ray Jr., is a wonderful preacher. Then, of course, my grandson, Frank Ray III, is a tremendous preacher. And I'm delighted to have him in this house with me on today. Uh, my son and my grandson, Frank Ray III, God called him to preach several years ago. And then called him to pastor Mount Austin Baptist Church here in the city of Memphis on Breed Love. He's a tremendous preacher, tremendous gift to the body of Christ. Uh, not, not only is he preaching around the city, but he has been invited to preach in places across the country. He is now a student at one of our wonderful theological seminaries here in the city of Memphis. And I praise God for my grandson. I am so proud of him. I bubble with joy every time I see him and hear him and watch how God uses him. He's bone of my bone and he's flesh of my flesh. And I thank God for this young man. And he's in the studio with us today. Trey, I'm so delighted to yes, have sir. you to be here and to share with us today. God yes, has sir. so gifted you and prepared you as a wonderful preacher. You've been gifted. Uh, you're a student of the Word. Uh, you have such a pleasing personality. Uh, it's hard not to love a person like you. <laughs> and so I thank God for you. And I want you to know. Uh, publicly, as well as privately, that I love you and I appreciate you and I thank you so much for allowing God to use you. Welcome. We're honored to have you. I accept. Good to be here. Thank you so much. Uh, during my day of preaching uh, years ago, uh, things that people look for out of a message, they look for something much different now. There was a time that people used to say that when they heard a preacher, especially a black preacher, Yes. They look to find hoop, hack, and hop. <laughs> yes. uh, now it is different. They want you to be fast, uh -huh. be firm, and be seated. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, and so they look for various things now. But in all, uh, uh, all sincerity, uh, that's a different age group. Yes, sir. Uh, the age of 18 to uh, 40, uh, look for different things from a person uh, that's from 50 years and up. Uh, tell me, if you will, if you don't mind, mm -hmm. what is your approach to reaching the age group of your age? Uh, I came from the baby boomers. Mm -hmm. and we came through that rough age. Uh, many things that we had to encounter, uh, civil rights margin and all kind of stuff that we had to encounter that you all know nothing about. Mm -hmm. You all don't have to deal with it or you haven't had to deal with it. Yeah. Uh, but yet the gospel is as pregnant today as it was during that day. So would you just share with me and share with the audience some of the things that you think would be pregnant today mm -hmm. to bless people of your age because that's the age that's going to take us from them. Yes, sir. Well, one of the things that I discovered that preachers my age have to do and need to do is to stay connected to what's going on around them. 
uh, for instance, uh, what music they're listening to, what shows they're watching, what places they like to go. Uh, because if you stay relevant in your conversation, conversation is always a connector. And I don't stay relevant to try to be relevant to the world, but to be relevant to people. Okay. Because we are in the people business. God instructed us to be fishermen of men. Yeah. So I think that in order to be a, an effective fisherman, you can't fish with a pole. You yeah. can't be a one-shot fisherman, but you need to cast out a net. Okay. And so in order for us to cast out a net, you have to be diverse and you have to be versatile in your approach, mm -hmm. uh, not just to preaching, but how you witness to people on an individual basis. Yeah. You need to really be in tune with what they're doing, what they're listening to. For example, I preached a sermon a couple of weeks ago right here in New Salem called By Felicia. Okay. Uh, it's, it was a phrase that was uh, familiar with this movie called Friday. Okay. And it became popular during this year where people use By Felicia to dismiss situations or foolish people. Okay. So I used John 8, you know, the woman uh, that was caught in the act of adultery. Okay. And we entitled that By Felicia. People absolutely loved it because while it was relevant, it was still rooted in the word. Okay. And I learned it from you. Uh, you know, your generation, y'all like Cadillacs, but my generation, we like Mercedes Benz. Y'all y'all didn't like rims, but my generation, we love rims. We like to add stuff to stuff that's already good. Okay. And so that's kind of what I've tried to do with my ministry. I've tried to take what you taught me. Uh, what I've learned from preachers your age yeah. and just put some spinners on it just add a little more flair to it okay <laughs> yes. okay that's wonderful great <laughs> tell me if you will um, since you attended the school mm -hmm. the theological seminary has it enhanced your preaching mm -hmm. or has it uh, shown you a different approach to the text mm -hmm. one of the things school has done for me is it has made me extremely disciplined Okay. Uh, with my study. Okay. Uh, it's extremely difficult trying to balance pastoring yeah. and being a student. Yeah. So you have to be disciplined in your study. You have to really uh, develop a regimen of what you're going to do when you're going to do it. Mm -hmm. And so now what I have to do is I have to wake up extremely early yeah. because I believe in every preacher should have a devotional period with yeah. God. Yeah. That I find it difficult to come up with a sermon when I'm trying to come up with a sermon. Yeah. <laughs> so it's more easier to come up with a sermon in my devotional time when I'm not trying to force it. Okay. Uh, and that just comes with your discipline that you know that while you're a student, you still have to have a relationship and nurture that with God. Okay. And so that's what, that's what school has taught me. It has also taught me uh, how to be more studious and what I'm looking for in the text, okay. uh, where it started for, say, mm -hmm. context, culture, mm -hmm. uh, history of the text, mm -hmm. learning that uh, while we live in a westernized culture, mm -hmm. the Bible was centered in an easternized culture, yeah. which is va vastly different from the world that we live in today. Mm -hmm. so, so school has been extremely beneficial and taught me a lot okay. uh, during this past year. Wonderful, wonderful, That's wonderful. It. I want to go back to the passage that you just mentioned about Felicia. Uh -huh. uh, that's in John chapter 8. It is such a unique passage. Uh, it's a passage, to be honest, that many manuscripts ignore. Yeah. Uh, that when you look at many commentaries, they try to bypass it because they don't want to get into that discussion about this adulterous situation. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, the text says that, that the people came uh, and their motive was to get Jesus. Yes. If the woman was really not an item, an object for them, she was just a figure. Mm -hmm. Because when they approached Jesus, they approached him from this angle. It's a master. Yeah. Uh, Dadaskis in the Greek, which means teacher. Yes, it's a teacher, we, 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 we brought to you this woman taken in adultery in the very act. Then they were so uh, unique in that passage till they say, in the Mosaic law, yeah. when one is caught in the act of death, they should be stoned to death. Now that was part of the scripture, yeah. because Leviticus says when you're caught in the, when they're caught both, yeah. uh, one should be stoned, the woman should be stoned, the man should be hung mm -hmm. by the neck. 
uh, to death. They just said uh, that she should be stoned to mm-hmm. death. What do you say? Now, in, in, the, in performing that statement, they tried to put Jesus on the spot. The problem is that you don't take the word and try to mess with Jesus because he's, he don't just have the word. He is the word. Yes, sir. Uh, what do you say? Now, Jesus was caught between two different dilemmas. If Jesus said, go ahead and stone the woman, yeah. of course he would have fulfilled the Mosaic law, but the Roman law says that you don't have a, the authority to yeah. stone anybody. Yeah. So he would have broke that law. Yes, sir. Secondly, uh, if he had said, let her go, then he would have broke the Mosaic law. But breaking the Mosaic law, then he would have been in trouble. Absolutely. Uh, but on the other hand, if he had said stoner, no longer could they say he was a friend of sinners. Yeah. Because now it looked like he was getting in trouble. If he did, if he said let her go, yeah. he was in trouble. If he said don't let her go, yeah. uh, let her go. But what do you do? And what did Jesus do? Uh, in the situation where you, if you're in trouble if you say yes, yeah. you're in trouble if you say no. Mm-hmm. Now Jesus, some said Jesus stalled for time, but I said Jesus knew what he was doing all the time. Yes, sir. Because the Bible says he stooped down mm-hmm. and wrote on the ground. Now that's not the first time God wrote. Now, two other times, remember, he wrote, he wrote yes, tables sir. of stones mm-hmm. that said, thou shalt not, you know. But then he wrote again in Daniel chapter 5. Yeah. Uh, when Belshazzar uh, had made a terrible mistake, and he wrote on the wall, many, many, tekel, you frosted, which means you have been weighed in the balance and found wanted. Yeah. Now, scholars say they don't know what he wrote on the ground. I think I know what he wrote. <laughs> yes, sir. I think what Jesus wrote was sins that the people around him had committed. Mm-hmm. He was the only one that knew that he wrote down who they had been with, yeah. you know. If a person's name was John, he wrote right next to a Joanne. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. If a person's name was Thomas, he wrote right next to a Tanisha. You know what I'm you know, and, uh, and so when they looked and saw their own sins, yeah. they walked away. I think you, you can answer yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. you can. So what I simply did with this text is the intent of the scribes and Pharisees that it was foolish. Yeah. So that's a representation of Felicia. As I said in the beginning, Felicia is a foolish situation. Yeah. So because their intent was foolish, I turned around and said, by Felicia. Okay. So what was the first thing that Jesus did? Number one, he did not entertain Felicia. Yeah. He didn't entertain, entertain the foolish situation. He simply ignored them. Yeah. So that's what I told the people that sometimes you have to do in the midst of a Felicia situation. Yeah. Everybody and everything is not worth a response. Exactly. Everything and everybody is not worth your time. Exactly. Everything and everybody is not worth you wasting your mind thinking about it. Yeah. You say this all the time. Why would you let somebody park on your mind that ain't paying no rent? Exactly. And so sometimes we got to learn how to not to entertain Felicia. Yeah, yeah. But then the second thing I told them is that sometimes you got to learn how to engage Felicia. Okay. What he did was he wrote on the ground. Mm-hmm. Then when he got up, he responded to them. Yeah. He said, he that is without sin among you, yeah. let you first cast a stone at her. Yeah. Uh, what I think he did is what he was writing on the ground, letting them know that I know who you really are. Exactly. Why are you trying to point your finger at somebody else? You're not perfect. Romans 3 and 23 says, For we all have sinned and come short yeah. of the glory of God. So all of us, no matter how perfect we might try to be in a period church, we've all got some issues. Yeah. We've all got some faults. Yeah. We've all got some shortcomings. Yeah. And the difference between some people is just ours is visible and theirs are not. Yeah. So they come to church looking all snooty with their head up like they've always been a, a mother, like they've never been in the club, yeah. like they don't know what dropping it like it's hot is, like yeah. like they don't know what Hennessy, what gin and juice is. They they act like they got it all together. What is that? What is that? <laughs> 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 you know, they, they act like they, they, they got it all together. They have no idea uh, what the world is. And sometimes uh, when you're dealing with those type of people, you have to engage them sometimes. Mm-hmm. You know, engage is a military term. Yeah. That whenever uh, the military gets ready to engage somebody, they don't go in blind. Mm-hmm. They don't go in off a reaction, but they develop a strategy 
yeah. on how to engage the enemy. Yeah. And many times, I believe the reason why Satan is kicking so many Christians' butt is because they don't know how to engage the enemy. Yeah. Most of the time, when we react to the enemy, we react and not engage. Yeah. We don't have a strategy. We just go in blind. It's, it's a reaction. But sometimes, you yeah. know, the devil is intelligent. Yeah. So we have to be wise as serpents, gentle as doves. Yeah. We got to know how to handle the enemy. Yeah. We got to engage the enemy sometimes. Yeah. I'm yeah. going to let you get back into it. And, and exactly. And what we have to always learn how to do is to pick the situations we're around. Yes, sir. Jesus knew he was dealing with trash. Mm -hmm. So that's what he wrote on. Yeah. He wrote in trash because that's what he was dealing yes, with. Yes, sir. With trash. Secondly, you have to pick the times that you fight. Mm -hmm. He knew exactly the time to fight. He knew yeah. what to do and how to get it done. Yes, sir. Even when a person is angry and upset, and if there's mud on that person, if they rub it, they smear it. Mm -hmm. But if they wait till it dry, it drops off. Yeah. All by itself. And there are things that you learn through Jesus in those situations. Yes, and then, of course, Jesus says, He that is without sin among you. That's what King James said. Mm -hmm. But the Greek text says this, he that is without the same sin yeah. cast a stone. Meaning that these people that were getting ready to cast stones yes, had committed the same sin. Yeah. Most of the people that always criticize another person about anything is because they're guilty wow. of the same sin. Yes, sir. And they see that sin in others. And so they believe if they put your light out, yeah. it will make their shine. Yeah. It is that plain and that simple. That's yeah. how people do as a whole. You find a critic, you find a person being very critical of somebody else, follow them home yeah. because they have a serious problem mm -hmm. themselves. Jesus says, now watch this. After he says, he that is without the same sin, yes, the Bible said they left mm -hmm. one to the, uh, from the eldest to the least. But now you always remember that when people leave a fight, people is not saying they're not through. Yeah, they coming back. Yes, sir. Because um, John chapter eight, verse fifty eight, fifty nine, said these same folk what? picked up the same stones mm -hmm. that they was going to stone the woman, and they came to stone Jesus. Yes. Yeah. Uh, whenever you stand for truth, whenever you stand for right and righteousness. Expect stones yeah. to come your way. Uh, if they stone or tempted to stone Jesus, guess what they're going to do to you? Mm -hmm. They're going to do all they can to try to stone you in Absolutely. one way or the other. I like the way Jesus handled it. He didn't fight at the time. Yeah. The Bible said he left. Yeah. Uh, that's how John 9 comes in. It's the conclusion of John 8. Yes, sir. John 9, 1, it says, and, mm -hmm. which means he's adding John chapter 8 to John chapter and as Jesus passed by. Yes, sir. We're going to take just a pause a moment and break, yes, and we'll be right back. Uh, I'm enjoying this. Thank you. God bless you. Listen, I am so delighted again just to share just a word with you about what is getting ready to take place in the city of Memphis. It is our 13th year that we will be celebrating this expository preaching church growth enhancement conference that will take place here on the campus of the New Salem Church family. We have so many guests that will be coming, sharing with us, and just any one of these guests would be enough for us to come and to stay all the week. Listen at some of the people that will be here. The Jasper Williams from Atlanta, Georgia will be here. Uh, Dr. Arthur Jackson from Miami, Florida. Dr. Jamal Bryant will be here. Of course, Dr. Tellis Chapman will be here. John Adolph will be here. Uh, Torlin Morgan will be here. And then we're going to honor the president of a National Baptist Convention, USA Incorporated, Dr. Jerry Young. We're excited about what God is getting ready to do here on this spot of ground. My goodness, I can't wait. Circle your calendar for that time. You can call our church 
and register now, 1-800-375-4007. Or go to GodIsGoodMinistry.net. You can register now for this awesome situation. Be blessed. Pastor Ray, as everybody knows, is awesome. And all the speakers are wonderful. And just come, come, come join us and you will be blessed. Well, bless you. Listen, again, we are so honored to have all of you and to watch and view this telecast. I'm so excited today. I feel like uh, I'm sitting on top of the world to have my grandson, uh, Pastor Ray, Pastor Frank Ray III, uh, that's here with us today, outstanding preacher. Uh, he's preparing himself um, to just do mighty work for the Lord, and I thank God for him. As a matter of fact, when I was his age, I looked just like him. I was, uh, I was, my skin was lighter. I was a hundred pounds smaller, uh, and all that kind of good stuff then. But pastoring people for forty-three years, they <laughs> made me turn blacker uh, and got fatter, and, <laughs> and lost all my hair. Uh, almost lost my teeth. Came out of sea. But I am so honored. I'm honored to have uh, uh, you again, Pastor yes, Trey, uh, to sit here and share with us uh, and just to share just a word from the word. There is a, there is a story in the Bible mm -hmm. of a person by the name of Joseph. Uh, Joseph was a unique person, and he should teach all of us lessons that, that Joseph was his father's favorite. I like that because, to be honest, all of us, we're God's favorite. Mm -hmm. uh, and Joseph was that young son that his father did so many great things for him. But uh, he got in trouble with his brothers yes, sir. because he was blessed by his father. Now, that's yes, saying something. Because whenever you're blessed by the father, yes, sir. many times you have problems with the brothers. That's good. Uh, uh, you would think people would want to rejoice yeah. because you're blessed. Yeah. But it's just the opposite. There's an envy, there's a jealousness yes. that's out there that people cannot rejoice with your success. Yeah. And many times people don't even want to hear about how God has blessed you. Yes, sir. Okay. And so that you have we have to learn how to deal with that. Yes, sir. The Bible says to us is wise as a serpent, but harmless as a dove. Mm -hmm. I like the Joseph story because there's one thing that, that you see all through his life. There's a word in every segment. If you follow the story of Job, it said, and the Lord mm -hmm. was with Joseph. Yes, sir. That when, when, they, when they, he went to his brothers and they beat him up and put him in the pit, the Bible said, but the Lord was with Joseph. Yes, sir. And they sold him to the Ishmaelites. He cuts in and said, but the Lord yes, sir. was with Joseph. When he got to Potiphar's house and the wife lied on him, yeah. the Bible said, but the Lord was with Joseph. Share with me just a little bit about this Joseph. Uh, you you know, know, Joseph is absolutely one of my favorite stories. One thing that is intriguing to me about Joseph is the fact that he seemed to always be ridiculed about his brothers because he was the one, he was the youngest. You know, yeah. in the Bible days, it was normally the older son yeah. that normally got the blessings. Yeah. Uh, but in this story, it's the younger son yeah. that gets the blessings. Yeah. Uh, which when I look at that, it lets me know that whenever people think that you should be in one place, yeah. and God puts you in another place, <laughs> yeah. it can always cause you some frustration. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I preached a sermon on the Word Network a couple of months ago called uh, The Frustrations of Favor. Yeah. That a lot of times we, we pray, we want to have favor, we yeah. want the blessings of God, we want yeah. 
promotions from God. We want God to enlarge our territory. Yeah. But we don't realize sometimes that what we're praying for is some more frustrations. Yeah. <laughs> P. Diddy said it like this, more money, more problems. Yes. <laughs> and, and we've got to realize that even though the favor of God is wonderful. Yeah. We've got to also prepare ourselves for the frustrations that come along with the favor. Wow. And that sometimes uh, being having vision is costly. Yeah. Uh, because the thing about vision is that vision is different from sight. Yeah. Sight sees the things the way they are now. Yeah. But vision sees things the way they can be. Yeah. And a lot of time, when you got favor, you're frustrated because your vision does not line up with your sight. Yeah. Yeah. That what you're in right now does not line up with, with what's on the inside of you and what you know God has called you to be. Wow. And so many times that can be frustrating. But the thing about it, as you said, in Genesis chapter 39, the Bible keeps on saying, and the Lord was yeah. with Joseph, yeah. Yeah. which lets us know that as long as the Lord is walking with us, yeah. we can overcome any kind of frustration, yeah. any depression, anything we're going through, we can overcome it as yeah. long as the Lord it's is with, with us. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You said something significant there. God cannot trust everybody with trouble. Exactly. But I want to go a little step further. When we get to Genesis 50, we really see that the key to the story is not God trusting Joseph with trouble, mm -hmm. but he trusted Joseph with people. Because oh. when you get to Genesis chapter 50, those same brothers uh -huh. that threw him in the pit yeah. is now at his feet in the palace. Yes, sir. Now, yeah. most people, when they're in a position of power, uh -huh. would have used that as an opportunity to get revenge. Exactly. Yeah. But Joseph looked at the situation and said, you know what? I don't have to do anything. Yeah. Because what you meant for evil, God meant it for good. God meant it for good. Wow. So sometimes God has to know that not only can he trust you with trouble, but that he can trust you with people. Wow. Beyond what yeah. you've been through or what they put you through. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. This is Well, God bless you. Listen, I am so delighted again just to share just a word with you about what is getting ready to take place in the city of Memphis. It is our 13th year that we will be celebrating this expository preaching church growth enhancement conference that will take place here on the campus of the New Salem Church family. We have so many guests that will be coming, sharing with us, and just any one of these guests would be enough for us to come and to stay all the week. Listen at some of the people that will be here. The Jasper Williams from Atlanta, Georgia will be here. Uh, Dr. Arthur Jackson from Miami, Florida. Dr. Jamal Bryant will be here. Of course, Dr. Tellis Chapman will be here. John Adolph will be here. Uh, Torlin Morgan will be here. And then we're going to honor the president of a National Baptist Convention, USA Incorporated, Dr. Jerry Young. We're excited about what God is getting ready to do here on this spot of ground. My goodness, I can't wait. Circle your calendar for that time. You can call our church and register now, 1-800-375-4007. Or go to GodIsGoodMinistry.net. You can register now for this awesome situation. Be blessed. Pastor Ray, as everybody knows, is awesome. And all the speakers are wonderful. And just come, come, come join us and you will be blessed. All of our viewers, we thank you so much for spending this time with us. I've certainly enjoyed my grandson, Frank Ray III, pastor of Mount Austin Church on Greek Love in the city of Memphis. I thank God for him and I pray that God will continue to bless you in such a mighty and such a marvelous way. I want to invite our viewers that if you can to come share with us at Salem uh, Baptist Church. We're at 2237 South Parkway East, Memphis, Tennessee. We're between Airways and Cooper on Parkway. A worship service every Sunday morning at 9.30 a.m. We would love for you to be with us and be our special guest. And listen, remember this, God is good. You got it. All the time.
Be blessed. Oh, God is good.